Okay. So what's wild about this is, and you know, I really hate making rant style videos, but like, man, let's, let's just, let's just read this, this big old article we got here as of November 16th, 2024, the star Wars movie centered around Daisy Ridley's Ray has been removed from its 2026 release date. And its status is unclear. So, realistically, this seems to be the norm right now with Star Wars. Like, this seems to be what's going on is they keep announcing crap and then and then they 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 scrap it, like Rangers of the New Republic and the X Wing Squadron show or whatever it may be. This whole podcast this episode is about addressing the state of star wars now i really haven't talked about star wars too much on this channel since uh, i did the podcast over on my per my solo podcast the buckethead podcast um but the last thing i covered was the acolyte brady wasn't here for that <laughs> and be glad that you weren't now Realistically, the first thing I want to talk about is what Star Wars was to us versus what it is now. This is the first thing of many things we're going to chat about here. And just the message and the feeling of what it was then to what it is now. Now, obviously, Brady, you weren't able to join the uh, what it was like growing up with the prequels podcast. But let me get your take as to what Star Wars was when you look at it in through that scope of when you were a young boy. So for me, it was an opportunity to escape the world, the reality that I was in, right? Like that's what Star Wars was always to me was like this other world in a galaxy far, far away, like literally where you could escape the reality of what was and imagine, and it, it was an open world in a sense where you could be anybody, you could be a bounty hunter, you could be a Jedi, you could be a, you know, Sith, you could be literally anybody, anyone you wanted. And you could even like make up your own OC as a kid, or you could be one of the others. Like when you go play on the playground and everyone's got sticks and pretend to be Qui-Gon Jinn or, you know, Obi-Wan Kenobi or Luke or whoever. And it was just an opportunity to create this world that you could escape the reality of the real world. Yeah. And, and just the, 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 the drama and the bull crap of what's going on in the real world. hundred percent. Yeah. Again, I don't, I, I don't mean to stampede this episode, everybody. There's a lot to be said. Um, now what it is now and how it feels now, given what you've seen, even just the last two years, Brady, how do you feel? I hate it. I hate what it's become. I'm sorry. Like, it's not good. Like, there's a reason that the first, I'll say nine movies, first nine movies, you could say first six, first three, whatever, were so good. And it's because it was original content. It was well-grounded, good story with what you will. It followed a plot and a storyline. At least we'll say for the first six, right? There were some plot holes in seven eight and nine but whatever right i'm not trying to kill the the ray series i don't hate it right like it has its flaws but it has its benefits but like that was to me where the good content was the best content we'll say mm -hmm. um as time progressed like with other things like the mandalorian i thought the mandalorian was great i know we're going to talk about it later on as well it'll come up again yeah but like the content quality is going down and people keep feeding that content quality. And I don't mm -hmm. know why. Mm -hmm. Like, I don't. And for me, realistically, when it comes down to the the feeling of what it was, to me, it was something that like, yeah, sure, it, it, it pulled from real world things. Like, obviously, like the influence of World War II and all that stuff. Oh, but it was... Okay. It, it took aspects of it. It wasn't like, hey, this is going on right here, right now. 
what's happening in this show and movie is directly referencing what's going on now. And to me, kind of bringing in a different franchise, that's what's killing the boys for me. Now, I know right. I, di- I didn't watch the or uh, read the comic books of the boys, but the boys is directly ripping from what's happening in the political stuff nowadays and all that good stuff. And I'm just like, that, that doesn't, it just feels like they're literally just scrolling through Twitter, getting ideas of what to use for the show. That's kind of what it feels like with Star Wars now. Like back in the day, Star Wars, it felt like you were going on an adventure. It didn't matter. It did like they they never drew attention because everyone, as a black man saying this, everyone drew is now drawing the whole thing of, well, there's not enough representation in Star Wars. There's not enough diversity. There's not enough this. There's not enough that. Like it's so white male centered and da 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 da. And I'm like, yeah. But if that's your problem, why have you been following it for all these years? Like, like it, it, the, the craziest thing to me is they're getting mad at the fans who want them to just tell good stories. And when Disney tells a new story and they give the diversity there, they're like, well, it's not the diversity that I wanted. You need to give us more of this and that and this. It stops being about a battle of good versus evil. And starts being a battle of let's pander to this ver- this section of fans and this section of fans and let's try to get our Twitters trending and this and that and have let's, let's clip farm and whatnot. It doesn't feel genuine anymore. Like the craziest thing to me is it's almost like a check the box. Yes. Like did we were we politically correct? Were we this? Were we that? Were we all these things before we produce this movie? When we write this story, are we this, this, and this? And I think that the more that you bring it up, the more I think about this is that storytelling is storytelling, okay? Events happened, and they didn't... Like, when a story is told or an event is told, it doesn't include those things. Mm -hmm. People come up with characters, they take those characters, and they make a story with them. It's not a check the box it's not a it's not a place for a political platform it's not a place for a racial platform it's not it is a story being told to tell a story and that is it it is a story well and this is exactly where i i land on the situation of obviously not feeling like star wars like where you It wasn't like it was something else and then it was sci-fi, like turned into sci-fi. Star Wars always felt like whatever they came up with, like the Empire and the Sith and the Jedi and the, like, that felt like Star Wars. And when I say that, it's like, like with the Mandalorian, you couldn't tell the story of the Mandalorian in any other version or any other universe but Star Wars. You couldn't tell the story of Anakin's fall to the dark side in any story but Star Wars, realistically. You couldn't tell these stories. You couldn't tell the Clone Wars in any franchise but Star Wars. But you can tell the Acolyte. You can tell a lot of the sequels because, like, Solo, (laughs) the Book of Boba Fett, like, it's like... (laughs) And I was saving this for another, uh, for later in the, in the podcast, but it feels like Disney wants like, you know, the, 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 the movie rebel moon that Zack Snyder did, right? Yeah. It's like his version of star Wars. And it feels like Disney wants to do their own sci-fi story. That's not star Wars, but they know it'll flop. So they're trying to proxy tell it through star Wars. Like, if okay. that makes sense, yeah, like yeah. they, they, they want to have their own sci-fi story like City of Ember or Valerian or uh, like a Hunger Game or you know what I mean? Like, yeah, their, 100%, own, 100%. their own thing, but not but they're just like, OK, well, we know it won't do well. So let's just wrap, put a Star Wars skin over it and hope that it instead of sticking to what Star Wars is. Oh, excuse yes. me. Yes. <clears throat> sticking to what Star Wars is and all the hundreds and thousands of books and and all this stuff worth of worth of lore 
you're kind of just doing your own thing. And it's like, yeah, they own the IP. They can do whatever they want with it. But it's not working. Oh, no, not at all. Not even remotely close. <clears throat> um, so next up, what I have is projects just being abandoned. And let me pull up. Let me just pull up real quick. Um, let me pull this up. Right here. Here's what we have. Literally tomorrow, December 3rd, is Skeleton Crew TV series. It's basically a heist movie with a bunch of kids and these adults running from pirates in the Empire. I don't care for it. I'm not going to tune into it. Um, it seems like it's legitimately a show for like the younger generations. That's fine. Let them watch that. I don't care. Next, we have Andor Season 2 next year and Star Wars Visions Season 3. So next year, we have two shows. Two shows in one year. Now, yes, for me, I don't... I watched Visions Season 2, and there's a reason we didn't do reviews of that like we did with the first one. Wasn't oh, good. Really? That's right. We did watch the first one. It was the second one we didn't watch. Yeah. I, watched I don't think I still have. It's a lot of claymation. It's not great. Um, oh, claymation. Yeah. Like, you know how in the first one, every episode was a different anime style? Yes. This one is like, it's all almost claymation. Like, it, it, I, I didn't care for it. Um, anyway, then we have in 2026, The Mandalorian and Grogu, the movie. Oh. We'll, we'll talk about that. Don't worry. I'll let you go off about that. Um, Ahsoka season two, Taika Waititi Star Wars movie in development, James Mangold Star Wars movie, Dave Filoni's Mando vs. Republic movie in development, Shermin Chinois. Oh, so the Ray movie. This is her her new Jedi Order movie that's been delisted. Um, Simon Kinberg Star Wars movie, Rogue Squadrons movie. This has been announced for forever. And it still says status unknown. Um, the Mando season, Mandalorian season four. So seems like we're getting a Mando after this movie, which apparently was supposed to be the end of the Mandalorian. Like it was supposed to finish off his story. We're then going to get a fourth season of the Mandalorian and book of Boba Fett season two. The Lando Calrissian movie, which was announced years ago. And no one knows what's going on. Rangers of the New Republic presumed canceled. Um, uh, another movie presumed canceled. Ryan jo Johnson's trilogy canceled. Kevin Feige's Star Wars movie canceled. David Benoff and D.B. Weiss's Star Like, look at all this, dude. That's absurd, man. See, and that's where, like, basically it feels like they're just like, Hey, everybody, here's Star Wars. Do what you want with it. Exactly. Exactly. And here's here's my, my vibe, right? Here's my opinion on all of this crap, right? My opinion on this is what y'all need to do is, bro, back off with jumping from time to time to time to time. Like, how many people were invested in the story of The Mandalorian? Every single Star Wars fan. Yeah. Stick with this time of gapping the original series to the sequels. Don't do this thing where, okay, here's Mando Season 3. Here's Book of Boba Fett. Now let's watch Andor that takes place before all of this. And then let's watch Bad Batch, which takes place before Andor. And then, oh, wait, here's Ahsoka during the Mandoverse time. Oh, but you want to know what else we're giving you? Acolyte, which takes place 120 years before all of this stuff. <laughs> like, say what you will about the MCU right now, but at least they're following a timeline. Yeah, that's true. That's true. You can't argue that logic. Like, people get invested. Like, this, like yeah, season three of The Mandalorian was not my favorite thing in the world. Not even close, <clears throat> but it was a, it was a time that everyone got invested in. 
And this is where all these people are like, oh, well, we need new, refreshing, challenging stories. What's more new than a story that has nothing to do, well, had nothing to do with Jedi in season one, Mandalorians, a baby Yoda, and bounty hunters? Yep. Well, so here's my here's my problem, right? I'm going to go off on a little bit here. Go, go hey, ahead. Here's my problem with, with the whole Mandalorian, right? We got a gun-slinging bounty hunter that was in the Star Wars universe, universe, a part of a uh, a race, a culture that was like basically extinct, and they're rebuilt. It's being rebuilt. It's being reshown. A whole different story, right? I did not hate the Baby Yoda thing at first when all we knew was it was Baby Yoda. To me, that's mm -hmm. all we ever should have known. Yeah, because at that point. Baby Yoda, Grogu, took over the show. We lost the Mandalorian, and then the Mandalorian became the same thing that everything else is. Just, let's just see what we can do with it. Like, it had its peaks, it had its moments, it had so much potential that they could have kept going with seasons and seasons of just him doing bounties, getting involved with big, long stories, taking steps back, whatever. But then they just had to keep bringing, they have to keep attaching everything to the original nine mm -hmm. movies because mm -hmm. if they don't then i guess they're afraid people are going to lose interest which is not i'm pretty sure correct me if i'm wrong it is star wars the whole star wars is the anakin saga it's or not the the skywalker saga excuse mm -hmm. me it's all the first nine movies are about the skywalkers which guess what means there is room for other stuff but when you're dropping stuff as frequently as call of duty is People are going to lose interest. I'm yep. sorry. This whole thing of like, go, 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 drop, 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 drop. All everyone that loves this Star Wars content, you know what? Good for you, but it's not good storytelling. And it's because they're producing quantity over quality. They're just like, mm -hmm. yo, slap Star Wars on it. Like you said, it, it, they're just going for different sci-fi stories to show that they're politically correct so that they can white knight and do all this other stuff. It's not good storytelling. You're letting a political, like what's going on in the real world, affect a fantasy world where people go to escape, and then you're oversaturating it. We are oversaturated. Star Wars is oversaturated. Mm -hmm. Okay, they keep throwing mm -hmm. so many new things in there that the story will become so saturated that why can't I walk around in flip flops and a hoodie in Star Wars and be a Star Wars character? You know what I mean? It's just yeah, like to what yeah. at at what point are we gonna stop and be like, okay, we need a break. You want to know why everyone was excited for the first three films? Because it took them forever. After, uh, like after the first three, excuse me, six, uh, four, five, and six, it took them years to come out with one, two, and three. And then it took them even more years after that to come out with seven, eight, nine, right? And the reason is, is because anticipation was built up. A gener Each one of those films, three films, is generational. Mm -hmm. right like four five and six your dad's generation my dad's generation right our parents generation one two and three was our generation and then seven eight nine is the next generation generational release this oversaturation of stuff is insane to me and it just loses its quality it has lost all of its quality mm -hmm. well and to jump in and kind of like give to, to backpack off of what you're saying. The thing that gets me is I, I posted a video basically talking about like star Wars. I said, like you're getting star Wars fatigue. People are getting star Wars fatigue. And someone's like, no, if we got a thousand star Wars things and they were all good, you'd love it. Right. And I was like, no, I wouldn't because they're the thing that really did make star Wars special. Like the first, it was like two years between releases of movies when George Lucas was under them with the prequels, like, mm -hmm. no, not even that. Like, yeah. Like 1999 was uh, the Phantom Menace. 2002 was attack of the clones and 2005 was revenge of the Sith. Realistically between there, we got some games. We got, we got the little, the little mini series of the clone star Wars, the clone wars. Yep. Some books. That was it. Now. Yes. Like it was a different time. In then, and then and now everyone wants instant gratification. Yes. But, but, Hate them or love them, it gave you time to develop something and develop hype. 
Now it's like, okay, I don't have to wait for the Mandalorian in 2026. I've got goddamn two shows coming out between then. Like, why do I care about the Mandalorian now? Like, well, and like, like we've talked about with toys, right? And like merchandise and cosplay and all this stuff where people are creating costumes. How many Boba Fett versions have come out since the book of Boba Fett came? Is like one season. And even the Mandalorian. Like, how many different don't, variants? Don't fecking make me think of that. Do, do, do you, see, you. you see what's over my shoulder right now? Yes. The jetpack. Jet pack. <laughs> oh, don't. Don't send me back to that place. But they, they oh. like literally can't even let anything build simmer. The, the whole reason with film and whether people want to agree with me on this or not on TV shows, we, we are in this age of instant gratification where people are like, oh, I want the show now. I want it to I want it today. Like, I don't want to wait like for the episodes to come out. No, I want to freaking I want it now and I want to binge the whole thing. Hey. I'm right there with you. I love to binge as much as the next person, but I will tell you what, if you drop quality content and I have to wait <clears throat> weekly, monthly, yearly for the next episode, the next movie to come out, I will do it 110%, 10 out of 10 times. Well, as fucked, up as, it, with it. as fucked up as this is to say, like, the podcast, we're we're not making money off of it. It's not our it's it's a hobby. It's a hobby. Yep. It's it's a way for us to express our feelings about the fandom and about just all things pop culture. It, we don't make money off of this. So realistically, when these things are being made, we're working. We're we, we our attention is somewhere else. I feel like the people who are pushing for this instant gratification crap are the people who are doing this for a living, who are covering pop culture stuff for a living, who are you want to call them shills, but the people who are who are being flown out to Disney things and red carpet premieres and all this stuff, people who are benefiting off of these shows coming out are the ones who are pushing for more and more and more and more and trying to like control what's being brought out. Like realistically, like freaking in the realm of video game streamers are controlling the video game industry almost now, at least yeah. with when it when it comes to support on games like apex or titanfall or, De or, or destiny like where they're saying what they want and companies like okay it's what you guys want like your average everyday joe like <sighs> rewind that my dad our parents ot fans my dad saw a new hope 14 times in a row opening night is he Four okay no <laughs> 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 um <laughs> But um, I think it was over the course of the first two days, like, not opening night, you know. But anyway, um, but he he's like, like, he loved The Mandalorian. My family, see, two seasons of The Mandalorian. They loved it. Loved it. They're, now it's just like, they're like, what do we do? What, what, what are we following? What the heck is The Acolyte? What the heck is The Book of Boba Fett? What the heck is Visions? What the heck is Tales of the Jedi? Tales of the Empire? Like, what is all this stuff that's hitting us in the face? Oh, excuse me. Burp's coming out. Just had dinner. Um, But anyway, this is also, when I'm talking about, like, timelines and stuff, too, this also comes to the situation of canon. Oh, God. Oh, God. So, a lot of people are like, canon what? Canon doesn't matter. Canon shouldn't matter. And I'm like, yes, it has to. Especially, like, us Pirates of the Caribbean fans. We'll get to that in, a, in, a, in, a, in the next episode. But canon matters because you're telling a story in your world building. And there's limitations as to what happens. Canon is another word for contafecanuity. Well, 100%. Not only that, but hold on a minute. Here's why canon matters. And every single person who watches this will agree. And if you don't, you probably were that person. We all have had that one person in our lives when we were playing a game, when we were pretending that we said, oh, I do this to you. And they're like, nope, you can't do that. I block it. That is why. <laughs> God because modding. God, God modding. <laughs> if you don't have canon, you cannot 
like you the the door to god modding will never end mm -hmm. and there have been situations of even canon characters that are damn near god modded yep yep like supposedly sidious at one point or another was powerful enough to use his electricity on an entire planet i don't think that's canon but i understand what you're saying you know what I mean? Like, that's insane, though. Bro, There's a reason that canon does matter. Like, realistically, hold on. I don't I don't know if you guys can see it. You can't. It's back there. It's my Ray lightsaber. I, I, the reason I like, I like Ray is because of the, the potential she had. The potential she had. With everything that the sequels were and all the theories that came out, the potential we had for a fresh, new light side wielder female the potential even her and finn both had uh, but without even pushing a political agenda either exactly but here's the thing ray was god modded there's no way to defend that ray was isn't a mary sue. she is she is a mary sue like even even like the difference between her and wonder woman i know this is really weird but wonder woman was a fish out of water story ray was kind of a fish in water because she was she was in the desert but still stay with me now wonder woman she's an amazonian from themiscira descendants of gods has all this power and they're like hey you got to tone it back you gotta you can't do that in the real world you can't do like in her in her movie the first wonder woman movie she's like why can't i just kill this guy he's doing something wrong she's like hey we know that you could snap a bus in half Amen, just wonder by woman ain't Amen. wonder woman but it's like hey you got to tone that back as with ray she just gets all of this and we, we even see wonder woman from when she's uh, uh, like eight or nine years old training to when she's a full-grown woman and yes it's over a time lapse type of thing but we see the progress and see her training and see her struggle to get to who she is today we didn't get that with ray yes I've even said it. We saw Ray train, and then in from from Last Jedi to Rise of Skywalker, it was like a year that she was training with Leia. Show, don't tell. But here's the thing: is Ray realistically was only training to become a Jedi for like a year and some change? How can she then turn around and destroy the evilest, most powerful Sith to walk the planet? insidious after only fighting kylo ren three times no twice and losing one of those when he was at full health and snoke kylo killed snoke oh yeah he did huh oh snap. <laughs> yeah. kylo killed snoke kylo killed the majority of the praetorian guards in their fight kylo beat ray in their final fight um, at the water planet in the rise of sky or on the the endor remains on the on the planet leia had mm -hmm. to jump in and help him or help ray by calling out to kylo through the force but that doesn't line up with the things she's achieving like if we see her struggling over and over and over and over and over and then it builds up to her overcoming the big odds okay but she picks up everything so perfectly and that had never been a thing before like we see Anakin because Anakin for years has been labeled the chosen one. I don't need to explain this to people. I'm just re-explaining it to people who want to deny that Ray is more God modded and OP than Anakin or Luke. Anakin is the chosen one. Yep. He was the chosen one. Yep. He will bring balance. Anakin excelled all this stuff, but also Anakin trained for fucking 25 years and we saw it like we yeah. literally saw they didn't have to tell us we saw it from the time he gets picked up to the end of literally but before he comes vader you see that growth as a yes. person he wasn't able to really use the force before that i recall right in number one they never said he uses the force ahead of time like before qui-gon finds him no, no, he doesn't. It wasn't until they test his blood for midichlorians that he then is like, oh yeah, this dude might be the chosen one. Look at all of his midichlorians. So we saw a full-blown development with Anakin. Yeah. Full-blown de full development. 
And I agree with you. We didn't see that with Ray. It was like picked up and it's like, well, the heat of the moment, the resistance. No, 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 no. Stop. There's a reason it took Anakin, the chosen one, that long to get trained. It Being a Jedi, wielding a lightsaber, wielding the force to where you can do backflips, front flips, push people away, pick people up, grab your lightsaber. It's not an easy feat. Did we not all see how the average person dropped the dark saber? A Mandalorian who's trained to fight literally couldn't hold it up, and he wears Beskar armor and has fought Mudhorns and who knows what other... Crate the, dragons! Uh, crate dragons. Homie couldn't pick up a, light, uh, a frick, the dark saber. Sorry, you're not going to just be this person who comes in, God modded, and be a Jedi tomorrow. Exactly. Exactly. Not going to happen. And everybody else likes to argue that, oh, well, Luke is a Mary Sue because he picks up uh, a lightsaber and is able to go toe-to-toe with Vader. It's like, he doesn't go toe-to-toe. Luke gets his shit put, kicked in. Yes, absolutely. Luke, in, in episode five. So people are like, how did Luke train from episode one or episode five to episode or episode, yeah, episode four to episode five? There's been whispers and things I've seen that, that um, Luke, that uh, Luke really didn't train. And the real training he did was with with Obi Wan. Now apparently, it's was like he trained with Obi Wan for two weeks. But also being a the son of the chosen one, yeah, and pick it up a lot faster. Yeah, but realistically, it wasn't crazy long between Episode Four and Episode Five. Like, give me, like, let me find out how much time. How hold on? How much time w- was between Episode? Four and five of Star Wars. Let's also not men- not forget to mention what you just literally said, basically, is that he was the son of the Chosen One. Ray was just a person that they found. So, ho- the Battle of Hoth, I didn't know this, but the Battle of Hoth, I heard it's thrown down that the Battle of Hoth, between the Battle of Yavin... And the Battle of Hoth are three years apart. If that's okay. true, if that's true, let me look it up. If that's true, whoops. If that's true, Luke had, if it was five, three years, Luke had three years of training. Star Wars universe. Okay, let me pull it up. Let me pull it up. I, I, I didn't even think of this. This wasn't. This wasn't planned. So I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Um, but I'm gonna pull it up right here. It says, in the Star Wars universe, about three years passed between Episode Four, A New Hope, and Episode Five, Empire Strikes Back. So Luke was training, probably on his own at an at-home gym, if you will, for three years. And then he trains with Yoda for a couple weeks. Yoda! For a the couple, number one. The number one. For a couple weeks. And then he goes and fights Vader and guess what? Gets the shit kicked out of him. Yep. Gets the absolute shit kicked out of him when Vader actually starts trying. And then I think it's another year or two between Episode five. How um, let's see. Episode five and six. It is said six years. Six years Luke was training. So nine years total. Nine years nine total. Full years. Is that nine years? Right? Six and three. No, so it's three years between um, Empire and Return of the Jedi and three years between um, oh, episodes so, of four. Oh, okay. so, yeah, so six years. Yeah, so Luke trained for six years leading up to confronting Vader. If this is all true. Mm-hmm. Six years and had a Rage of Fury beat Vader down and Vader had to kill the Emperor because Luke threw his, his weapon away. Six yep. years. 
Anakin trained for 25 years because he was, or no, not really 20, not really 25. He was uh, eight or nine in The Phantom Menace and 25 in Return or Revenge of the Sith. Ray trained for max a year and some change and does all this shit. And she's the grandson of Palpatine. Which apparently, oh, that's right. I forgot. She's grandson of Palpatine. I forgot. Or, gra- or granddaughter. She's the granddaughter. granddaughter. Yeah, granddaughter. But here's the other thing too, though, is that apparently his Palpatine's son was a rogue clone of him. Which oh. it's like it, it doesn't make sense to me. Like it, it really doesn't. Why people have this argument of Ray isn't a Mary Sue, but you see the facts here. Luke trained for six years and in those the fights we saw him fight in those six years he took down some people on the sail barge got his butt kicked by vader ended up beating vader because he in the fit of rage and then turning for successfully bringing his father back to the light and we see luke's luke change from the smiley happy funny farm boy to the stoic Jedi Knight. Yep. We see that. Bro, we don't see any sort of character development with Ray. She still wants to find out who she is. She doesn't really... Does she even care about stopping the First Order and the bad guys? They don't... Even that whole motive of the sequels. Let's fight the First Order. They're destroying planets. Okay, well, duh. Of course you want to, but none of these people, like... Finn and Poe are really the only two who were behind their mission to stop the First Order. But not Finn until the damn third movie. He wants to run away for two movies straight. Yep. Like, and then Ray just wants to go back to Jack Who, and then the next movie, she wants to train with Luke and then try to bring Ben back to the light side. She could give a fuck about the freaking about the re- resistance or whoever until Ben's like, let old things die. We got to kill everybody. And she, she's like, don't do this. Like, bro. Anyway, spending way too much time on that. Um, <laughs> The next, like, but that's the thing is canon matters. Canon matters. Like if it took Luke six years to get to where he, he was, why is it not take, why are we not giving the same, same treatment to Ray as we did with Anakin? Why are we not building up Ray's movies, giving two year gaps between and then having little little resistance shows all the stuff we got up, up after the sequels, like the resistance TV shows? Why the shit wasn't that stuff put out between the movies under Solo being released and and or, or uh, Rogue One being released? Why weren't we building up this stuff? Well, and that, and to your point, like building it up, Ray could have been its own story where they didn't even have to link her to the Skywalker or Palpatine. She could have been like one of the first Force users that appeared after every one of them went into hiding or disappeared. She could have been the first one that basically just started coming out of the woodwork, and like other Jedi who were left survivors could have been the ones training her, like the Hidden Path, and. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Yes. Yeah. Just keep going. But hear me out, right? Yeah. I'm listening. You're not wrong. Essentially, the story of Cal Kestis. And and tell me, it's it's almost not. The more you think about it, like it could have been because she was a junker. She was a scavenger. Yep. Yep. That's this could have been a possibility to 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 develop something that wasn't attached to Skywalker. That could have just been completely another Star Wars story. You have the Star Wars story, the Skywalker saga, and then you have the Star Wars story, the Rey saga. You could have had these things. Bro, literally, I'm kind of jumping on what you're saying right now, is what they could have done with Rey, is they could have had it that she's ro- rolling around like like Cal and Prof at the beginning on Bracca, and, um, and it's Kylo Ren is trying to find Luke. They're trying to find Luke Skywalker, and they Kylo Ren has the Knights of Ren looking as his inquisitors right Mm -hmm. stay with me now people ray is doing her scavenger thing and during one of her things one of her scavenger buddies falls and she reaches 
just like Cal does for Prof and grabs them with the force. And she's like, what the hell was that? And then a day later, because like apparently like people can they can sense wherever the force is coming from. Kyla or Snoke senses that, sends the Knights of Ren out, tells Kylo to send the Knights of Ren out to look for Ray. And then Ray finds out, and then um, like we'd have to have like a seer type of person or whatever, what whoever it may be, but roll up to her just like Seer did and be like, Hey, you need to train as a Jedi, blah blah blah. And she's like, What the heck? Da, 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 da. After hearing all these stories about Luke Skywalker, the rebellion, the resistance, all this shit, she should be on board. Why the fuck you want to stay on Jack? You wait for your family to come back, but they haven't been there in 19 years. Like, dude, it's so true. Uh, basically what we're also trying to say is just give us Jedi fallen order and Jedi survivor in live action films. Just kidding. Don't do that. You'll probably fuck it up. Yeah. Don't um, cast this. Yeah. Please don't kill Cal cast this for us. But yeah, it, it like, honestly, this is what we're talking about as far as like Canon limits and rules, right? There has to be as much as y'all don't want there to be. There has to be. It's just, it's just like society, right? <laughs> like I'm going to get a little like yeah. cheesy here, right? Without laws and rules, the place, the world would be chaos. And this is why star Wars has to have its rules. Yep. Like, so here, here too is with Canon. Now here, here's a conspiracy theory that that's out there. I'm not sure how true it is. I read it years ago on Reddit. Uh, I've tried before this podcast, I tried to find it. I couldn't, I could not find it. The conspiracy theory goes as follows is that when George Lucas sold Lucasfilm to Disney, he put contingencies in place that yes, they could create their own characters, but they can't use the characters he deems as non-canon like Mara Jade and Han and Luke and Leia's kids because, and we'll go over this in another video, when he was going to do his original trilogy, Luke didn't have a kid, Han and Leia did, and instead of Kylo, it was Skylar Solo. Uh, George Lucas, it's on record saying, he hated, not he hated, but he didn't buy into the idea of Luke full sending Anakin style and being like, screw the Jedi order, or screw the Jedi code, I'm going to have kids. That's why Luke in the Mandalorian or in the book of Boba Fett, which George Lucas was on the set of, he, they had Luke be the way that he was where he gave Grogu that ultimatum. But yes, when Luke is the Jedi master, he takes Mara Jade as his wife. Hence why there is no Mara J. There, like, that's the conspiracy theory that George Lucas said, hey, you can't use certain era areas of EU and all that stuff, and specifically characters that I deem not canon, you can't use them when he sold them. I don't know how true that is, but with everything that's going on, I wouldn't, I wouldn't, find it as a lie you know what i mean like I, i'd be like okay that kind of makes sense anyway the next thing to talk about we kind of went squirrel mode is if you kind of want to look at the treatment of characters like we were talked about boba fett i i'm not going to go into a rant about the book of boba fett it's realistically that again disney is just doing their own thing and cr creating their own hype characters like din if you just reskinned boba and din and had din come or boba come back from the sarlacc pit try to find a belonging in the bounty hunters guild or the children of the watch and then he finds this kid and starts caring about more things than just the job you could that's just disney's version of boba fett and then when he comes back they don't know what to do with him <laughs> that's 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 what it is with what they did in mando season two was perfect he could have just after he goes into hyperspace after he shoots those tie fighters at the finale and then he just dips that could have been the last we see, saw of him that could have been it and i would have been satisfied of din last of seeing of din oh no i've seen a boba fett oh oh like gotcha. remember yeah, yeah, remember yeah. when they're at the light cruiser and boba is doing that, that like barrel roll and he's shooting at the the tie fighters behind him yeah and then he goes into hyperspace after helping Bo and all them drop down that mm -hmm. could have been the last. It's like, yo, he came back, he cleared house, dropped a seismic charge, 
took out some TIE fighters in the Slave 1 and he freaking repainted his armor and he's gone. That would have been fine. We didn't need the Book of Boba Fett. Also, we didn't need Kenobi. Okay, so I didn't hate Kenobi. I also don't think we needed it. But what I did approve of it and what I appreciated about it, and I never got this as a fan of Star Wars, basically you're one, you know, you're one through six Star Wars fan and even one through nine Star Wars fan. I didn't really truly understand how terrifying Vader was. Mm -hmm. And the more of the, some of the content that has been put out has shown me (laughs) how terrifying Vader is. Yeah. Because here we are talking about how it's over flourished, but then I'm going to say that more content of Vader has made him scarier. The right content has made him scarier. You mm-hmm. want to know what I mean? Go watch my playthrough of freaking Fallen Order. Yep. That yep. was content that made Vader scarier. Jedi, or excuse me, Kenobi made Vader scarier because of the fact that how he dragged those people through the street with a force when he knew he was close to Kenobi. Mm-hmm. And then the, the, the Kenobi Anakin or the Kenobi uh, Vader fight, right? Yeah. Terrifying. But there's also plenty of comics like the one I've seen where he's surrounded by re- rebellion soldiers and he senses all their fear and kills every single one of them. And he's outnumbered. Like he's outnumbered. There's no way anybody else would have stood a second of a chance. But it's Vader, and he's just absolutely terrifying, right? Yeah. So, like, look at his helmet right above Taylor. Yep. That thing looks like a skull. Like, it is a skull. That's terrifying, okay? Mm -hmm. That's good content. Beyond that, everything else in it wasn't really needed. Like you said, it wasn't necessary. It just, like, that's where I think the content really started to just kind of, like, start to roller coaster well that too like and i'm gonna put my little theory in there my my what what i would have done is i wouldn't have even done a kenobi series i would you had the one jedi that tried to talk to obi-wan and whatnot and something that could have led into the obi-wan show is we could have like i feel like more people would have been behind reva if she had actually been full send bad And it was following Reva trying to go after a Jedi and not trying to get freaking killed by Vader for not doing her job. If we saw, followed an Inquisitor go from Jedi Padawan to tortured to crap after Order 66 and broken into an Inquisitor and then doing Vader's bidding and chasing a Jedi and you're actually cheering for the Inquisitor because you like the character and you don't want them to get killed by Vader. Because I feel like a lot of the fear that we have with Vader is we see us in the situations instead of whatever character it is. Yeah. Like when we see Kenobi getting dragged, it's not that we saw Kenobi. We thought that we were getting dragged through the coals. It was that we were getting pulled out of the house when he was walking down the, the neighborhood, pulling that dude out of the house and then snapping that person's neck. That's what we saw. That, right. And then and then when he's storming into the building after Kenobi gets away and he's like, you were warned what defeat would bring. And he ch- sends Reva like 20 feet in the fecking air with a force choke. Like, bro, get like why I don't understand. And this is a little side rant. I don't understand why Disney's so afraid to full send on the the, the bad guy path. Like with um, Tales of the Jedi or Tales of the uh, Empire, or whatever it is. Barris off, he comes back and they just turn her good. Trilla, at the very end, right before she dies, becomes good again. Uh, Battlefront 2, Iden Versio, a stormtrooper, special forces, been in the Empire all her life, turns good. Why can't we just follow the bad I think guy's Disney's just too caught up in being like, well, we want to show, we, we want to show that, you know, you can come back from anything. You can come back from anything. And it's like, mm, no. that's not always the case. No, you no. got to have your bad guys. You got to have your bad guys. And people who were bad, and this just goes to all of Hollywood, people who were bad because like, hey, things have been done to them, but also for the sake of being bad. Like yeah. I, 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 the thing where people like full send 
is like more believable than everybody coming back from being a bad person every every single time. It's the same trope. And when they're like, we need something new, we need this. It doesn't mean cast a female black Star Wars lead. That's not what they mean. You could cast a black female lead, but have her be bad. Have her actually have a reason to be bad. Show the stuff that she's gone through that to turn her into what she is. That's more relatable than going through hell, coming back and being like, oh, by the way, I'm good now. Accept me. No. Like, we we see enough of it and like and, and now that you mention it like yeah you're right we see enough of it in literally everything well remember shuri in black panther 2 where her family her brother just barely died she couldn't create a, a cure for him her father was murdered in a bombing a terrorist bombing her mm -hmm. mother was killed right in front of her after her home was attacked yep okoye one of her best friends and guards got stripped of her rank right in front of her. And she believed it was because of her. And the guy who killed her mother is taunting her on. And she now has the black Panther suit. Kill the motherfucker. He deserves it. He murdered your mother. We'll always turn their other cheek. No, make the freaking coroner turn his other cheek when they're inspecting the wounds after you murdered him, dude. Yep. Oh, hey, gosh. Anyway. The Kenobi show to me was unnecessary. We didn't need it. It it did nothing. It it all it did was kind of make us wonder, hey, why the heck is Leia not more worried or sad that Kenobi died when she spent like a week with him and he rescued her and he told her who he was. It's not like he was like, Hey, I'm John Doe, or you don't need to know my name. She found out who he was through the freaking security thing, and that's why she ran off from him. Oh my god. Next thing is the bastardization of Din Djarin and Grogu. So I'll, let me set the stage. It's 2018, 2019. We get the Mandalorian. We get his great development. Now the dude is just a merchandising scheme and he plays second fiddle to Bo-Katan and Grogu now. Brady, go ahead. <clears throat> Grogu is a waste of a character. He is not necessary, and he ruined the Mandalorian. I stand by what I said. I will never, ever, ever change my opinion. Now, they killed, neutered Din Djarin from season one until now. They took away. Don't, Brady. My razor crest. Brady. <laughs> they gave him. I don't hate it, but they gave him a little dinky starfighter. And they gave him a gremlin of a child that will not even be out of its diapers by the time he dies. And then they gave him armor and the force. <laughs> Are you shitting me? It's Yoda species, though. How stupid does this all sound when you say it like I just did? <laughs> A merciless, cold-blooded killing machine turned daddy. Are you kidding me? Gun slinging, fastest gun in the West to Daddy. <laughs> I'm done. So done. Do we all forget I can either bring you in warm or cold? Do we forget that he let a dude get cut in half by a door in season one? He cut him Do in half, door, didn't he? No, yeah, the door cut him in half. He yeah. pulled him with the cable. And do we forget that Mandalorians are basically the Spartans of Star Wars? Disney. They will sooner die than surrender. He's not afraid of a mud horn. 
ten times his size and strength, but then he becomes a father. <laughs> oh, and we can merchandise the piss out of it. <laughs> you guys, you guys, as the fans of Grogu, hate me if you will. Call this hatred if you will. <laughs> Who fell in love with Grogu ruined it. You ruined it. Him being in it didn't ruin it. The way that it's carried on has ruined it. They could have let him go like he was supposed to <laughs> with Luke, and that would have been the end of it. That would have been the end of it. But then you guys probably would have asked for a Grogu Luke show. We Tell got it. it. We got it. They jumped in the book of Boba Fett, and we got the Grogu and Luke show. Two, true, true. But that's what you guys would have asked for. Six seasons of Luke and Grogu just because you want the adorable <laughs> freaking baby Grogu. Tell me I'm wrong, though. This is this is literally the topic of what we're talking about right now. You're not is wrong. the oversaturation and the fan service because people can't just be happy with just like letting things go. Let things come and go. They didn't they didn't have you know what they should have had didn't marry the frog lady. At this hey, 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 that's my <laughs> wife you're talking about, man. <laughs> you sicko. Yeah. But like, th- I'm sorry, guys. Like, it has been new. Not, not, I'm not sorry. It has been absolutely ruined by Grogu. This was the Din Jaren show. I don't mind that he ran into other Mandalorians. I liked that grittiness when they all ran into each other for the first time mm-hmm. on that world with the, the, the squid head people. But like mm-hmm. you killed it when you kept holding on to Grogu. I wanted to see the battle for Mandalore with him, just him, not with Grogu, just him. This cold blooded, they want him because he's a warrior and he's a game changer. He goes by the old ways and he's damn near invincible. When he has Grogu, it's his crush. It's his crutch, like literally. Mm-hmm. And mm-hmm. that's not God modding either. He has Beskar armor. That armor goes or he gets hit where it's not covering him. He's going to be injured, right? Mm-hmm. He's a human under that armor, which that's his vulnerability. When they gave Grogu, it literally was his cop out that God modded him at that point. Just keep Grogu on you. He'll just use the force for you. And then giving him the dark saber. We basically have a Mandalorian Jedi babysitter. Do I need I I need to say no more? It's been completely ruined all because of money, cuteness, and d- the stupidity. That's all I got. I, 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 hey, 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 hey. Don't forget about Grogu's mech suit in the third season. <laughs> <laughs> Guys, <laughs> s- step out. Of the blindfold out of the fog for a minute. <laughs> Brady's got his and, tinfoil hat on. <laughs> and and just face reality. <laughs> that the Mandalorian has gone way off the charts. It's off the beaten path. It's out in the it's become one of them hillbilly swamp people. It oh. doesn't even know who it is anymore. Who Billy Swamp people, Jesus Christ. Like, I'm freaking done. An assassin droid mech suit <laughs> for a baby. <laughs> I, dude, Do you all not like the stupidity. The more I think about this story, not Din Djarin as a character, getting Beskar, fighting, following the ways of the Mandalorian. Fighting a pterodactyl to save a, a youngling, a foundling, or whatever, to 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 like rebuilding the Mandalorian culture and taking back Mandalore to this stupid, s- stupid baby character thing. That guy's newsflash is going to outlive pretty much every freaking character around it. So why do we freaking bother? You going to fast forward to the day Din takes his last breath and then Grogu suddenly as soon as he takes his breath is capable of speaking and then we hear friend goodbye I am like <laughs> but what I don't know man I'm just just thinking as stupid as possible because I don't know how much more stupid it can get I'm gonna settle on down here just outside this newfound city of the law with a little baby green monster and I'm going to make him some Beskar armor. <laughs> Christ. 
Do we do like? Did I put it in Barney enough terms for people to understand how stupid I think this is? I didn't like. I like. I went off, and I feel like I need say no more. And this oh. is how I feel about a good chunk of this new Star Wars content. Like Taylor saves me mentally on a daily basis every time something and i say daily because at this point that's how much stuff's coming out it's just like at a daily basis he's like hey man this just came out don't fall for it it's a trap <laughs> exactly dude god I, bless I, taylor I, I, for even watching some of it i i want brady to watch the acolyte i really do i want i really I don't want, i want you to watch it and i want you to do it like i want to get your opinion on it i had to Bro. sit to, I, I i don't do it but I want, I want, I want you to. I want you to, but don't do it. Don't, don't do it. it, dude. It's, do it. it's so. It, the the wildest thing about the acolyte to me is it could have set up the Knights of Ren and done something really, really cool, but they just did not know what they're doing. And I'm not going to go down that rabbit hole anyway. Um. So, to kind of conclude this, um, what should they do now? You know, like I said. Like, what should Disney do with Star Wars? Because, like, as we see, as we saw, they have like stop. That's what Disney should do. Jesus, they should stop. Jesus, back up. We're gonna we're gonna get a little lighthearted here because the vibes have been pretty angry. So let's oh. let's go light. Let's go lighthearted. Here we go. We're underwater. We're underwater. We're look look at the look at the lights go. Look at the lights go. You know that was cheesy. Brady wouldn't know about any of this stuff, right? You know, but... I'll kill you. <laughs> anyway, what should Disney do with Star Wars now? What do you think, Brady? They should stop. Give up. Give the rights back to George Lucas. George Lucas, lock it up in a vault. Never touch it again. I'm, I'm serious. Okay. I'm. I'm just stop. <laughs> there we have talked and i don't want to go off on another rant again but i will say this right we have talked about this time and time again taylor and i have there is a plenty plenty of content out there for people to go and find themselves mm -hmm. comics there are com i remember growing up in high school and there was like comics for days of stories we had never heard about and or never seen there is plenty of other content for star wars you don't need it live action you don't yep. need it in a show yep so stop my opinion of what they should do is follow the same time period for the next three to five years with bi-yearly releases Either that or stop making stuff and just fecking regroup. Like, I know with all the shareholders and crap and blah, 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 they're expected to show, hey, you guys can do something or you've got an idea of something or whatever it may be. They got Star Wars Celebration up, coming up next year. It's going to be so interesting. And if Brady is available, we will be doing reactions to things like this. Like, we'll pull up just what was announced. We're not going to watch the whole puff piece or the fluffy interview or whatever it may be we'll just pull up the list and just give our reactions to what it is or say screw movies and tv shows and focus on video games okay I'll, I'll say if i have to give an answer to what i want want them to do truthfully but it would have to be good and i have to judge it before it gets released cal Kestis story that's it that's the only thing i would want but they wouldn't do it right. So, well, so do you want, do you want kind of my, what I've seen, what people think is going to happen now that you've played survivor, I can tell you this and maybe I've mm -hmm. already told you this before, but what people are theorizing and what it might, what might happen because realistically Kenobi should have been a Cal Kestis story. Okay. Like you could have just switched Kenobi with Cal and lost nothing. Anyway, but it really kind of, anyway, what people are theorizing is happening with Cal is obviously he's old. He's about the same age. No, he's younger than Ahsoka, right? And okay. Ahsoka, but we don't know how long Ahsoka's 
race lasts, right? Or how old they how old they they get, right? So she doesn't even look like she's aged. Boba and Din are probably around the same age as Cal. So Cal would be 40. Cameron Monaghan, I don't even think he's like in his mid 30s yet. The guy who plays Cal Kestis. So for right. them to explain why Cal would look so young if Cal either shows up in the sequel trilogy or shows up within the next couple years in the Mando verse, as they're calling it, it's because Cal's been hanging out on Tantalor and Tantalor is going to act like Star Wars' quantum realm. As in, he can hang out on Tantalor for five minutes and it's five ye- or five hours and it's five years in the real world. That's how they'll explain why Cal is so young. I'm going to throw my head through my screen. <laughs> yeah, I just. <sighs> I'm back to my original answer. I don't want him to do anything. I don't want nothing. No, uh, I, I would like them. I, realistically, this is all culmination of coming together for me to say, I want Battlefront 3. But. I found out the reason screw that up. The reason that we're not getting Battlefront 3 is because Disney wants like 30 to 40% of units so- earnings on units sold. Do they not have enough? <laughs> it's, it's like, oh, well, we'll miss out on the money. It's not like you're making millions of dollars every day throughout throughout the parks and Disney Plus. It's like let Bruh, the- they make millions a second. It's like, let the fans have the goddamn stuff they want. We want to buy your product. Make it good. That's it. Jesus, that'll be the end of this goddamn rant. We'll see you in the next one with Pirates of the Goddamn Caribbean and why that's getting screwed up. Because surprise, surprise, it's Disney. Oh, Lordy. (sighs) See you guys. Oh.